Welcome to the FA's Money Matters podcast. My name's Tom Lee and I'm the National Club Services Manager. On episode one, we're looking at the introduction to club finances and cash is king. Here we've got Danielle, James and Derek taking us through some details. Check it out. The first podcast series of its kind for leading club volunteers will look into the topic of money matters. We'll cover a basic overview of club finances, the way in which to manage money, how to work with budgets and taxes, which clubs should be aware of. By way of introduction, my name's Danielle and I'm delighted to be joined today by James from Sporting Asset and Derek from um, one of our youth clubs in Essex, but is also one of our FA club consultants. James, I'll start with you. Do you want to give our audience a little further insight into what you do at Sporting Assets? Great. Thanks, Danielle. Um, Yes, so I I work for Sporting Assets, as you say. Um, I spend a lot of time um, on day to day working with uh, community led sports clubs, some of them football, sometimes other sports, um, provide support and guidance um, on a range of things from kind of feasibility for facility projects or capacity building or helping them raise finance. So uh, most of my time is spent with volunteer committees um, and as always, um, you know, there's a real range of skills um, and and particularly when it comes to um, background in finance and, and confidence in finance. Um, so I think this is an important webinar, uh, sorry, podcast, just to look at that, because I think, you know, it, it can be a scary topic. And actually what hopefully we'll achieve today is is um, not not try and teach accountants how to do their job, but try, try and help people that perhaps aren't as confident uh, with some of the terminology and things that they'll encounter um, so that they feel, you know, able to contribute um, to discussion in the same way they would about other topics. Brilliant. Thanks, James. And Derek, I know um, you'll be speaking today not only as a club consultant, but also with your club blends on. Do you want to give a small overview of your role as an FA club consultant, as well as your time with Forest Glade Youth, who are now um, more uh, more known as Hashtag United? Yes, of course. Yes. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to uh, the, the podcast. Yeah, I'm Derek Pearson. I've um, been a chairman at a club for now. 28 years, I think we commenced this club um, with a man and a dog, really. So we had nine players to begin with. So, so balance sheet information in them days was probably on the back of a fag packet. But, but nowadays we have to we have to look at how we manage that differently. Um, and my role at the club really has been chair for, as I say, for, for almost since its inception. But, but more recently, um, the FA persuaded me to sign up as a, as a club consultant, which which I thoroughly enjoyed. And it's actually opened up lots more aspects to, to, to my career as well. And also talking with clubs about how they manage their their business and, and not just on the accounting side of things, but how do you how do you put in place um, a business plan and how does that drive the accounts? So I think for us all today, we all manage businesses in a different way, but it will give us a really uh, good insight into into ideas that you may not have thought of, uh, but also to think, yes, this is a way forward and we can sit down as a committee uh, and actually use some of these examples for, for our future. Brilliant. Thanks, Derek. And it is all about that, isn't it? It's all about the future. It's providing club and league volunteers with the right information and tools to be able to, to deliver within their club and their community. So without further ado, let's get started. James, as we all know, COVID-19 has and continues to cause some very worrying times for us all. Um, with grassroots clubs and leagues also feeling that uncertainty with finances being one of the biggest concerns clubs and leagues have. So why is finance and the management of finance so important? OK, yeah. So if I can, uh, uh, yeah, just flip on. So, I mean, it, as you say, Daniel, unfortunately, at a time like this, it really does bring it into sharp focus, um, some of the issues that we'll cover today. So, you know, when we talk about um, thinking about why businesses, which include sports clubs, might might get into trouble, um, you know, there's a variety of reasons, really. So, you know, cash flow management, if you've you've ever um, met anyone or know anyone who's, who's, who's started a small business, they'll tell you, uh, cash cash is king. Um, 
so you know it, it it's ultimately when does that money get received into your um bank account and when you look a little bit further down that slide you've got um poor credit control for example so you know what systems do you have in place to chase late payments um bad debts all the things that ultimately contribute to whether you get paid or not and you know whilst it's easy to apply that to small businesses even at a club level we all know um the challenges of not getting subscriptions in on time or having a good system in place um you know there's some more obvious things that you know that can get you into trouble uh, around overspending um and you know sometimes although that sounds quite reckless it might be you know it might actually be because you're not got the information that you need about the um the financial health of of the club you're working at which is um you know i'm sure derek will share some of his thoughts on that throughout um the podcast but you know it, it it's very easy just to say over overspending it's about making informed decisions um you know and actually kind of building on what you said about covid19 with um funding you know we've seen um a few kind of capital projects at the moment that that are being um i suppose having to be rethought through or phased because you know the, the costs are currently changing you know the you know so the supply of some of the materials is hard to get uh, i think that's something that for example was has happened a bit with artificial pitches depending on where they're coming from so uh, again it's you know it, it's a movable feast so what might look like um a well thought through budget um for a particular project suddenly changes so um yeah there's a, there's a lot of different ways that business can get in trouble um and hopefully some of the systems and processes and information that we talk about today can help mitigate that so um you know we just kind of I suppose we want to just break down and identify what the main um uh areas uh are in terms of in terms of the club accounts or what you may or may not see firstly so we'll go through these all in a little bit more detail um but first up we'll talk about the in income and expenditure account which is often called the profit and loss um which is really just that story of your business over a period of time um so it shows the transactions um incomings and outgoings um then we've got the cash flow statement which um shows when that money's received um and again over over a set period of time uh and and ultimately will help you know whether you can pay your bills or not um and finally we'll talk about the balance balance sheet which um as the name suggests is is all about ultimately balancing up um assets liabilities um and any um shareholding or equity that that's in the business um so another thing that you know a, another term or phrase that you often hear is um is either management accounts or statutory accounts um so it's important to realize the differences between these two so um management accounts are very much um uh built up and 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 um tailored at the discretion of of each club or business so something that will um typically be viewed by the committee or directors um and you know it will it will show as well as your normal kind of income and expenditure there might be um particular focus perhaps on certain um areas that you're prioritizing maybe from your business plan um so they can be set up really in any way that you'd like uh any way that really helps the committee and the directors and the board make informed decisions um and you know in future sessions we'll talk about um budgeting and and monitoring a budget um but you know th these are often broken down into different areas so that you get enough detail to really know which areas of the business are working well or not statutory accounts are um very different they're you know more formal um because ultimately these are accounts that um will be 
set out in a certain way that um, meet the criteria laid out by um, your external um, regulator. Now, it, it depends, firstly, whether you're incorporated or not, as it, so whether you've got a legal entity or not. If you have, then each um, uh, legal entity will have a corresponding um, body which will ask for the accounts to be laid out in a certain way. So, for example, if you're a company, uh, if you're a company, then you'll um, file accounts in a format that companies house layout. If you uh, charity, you'll have extra responsibility on the information and and in terms of the information you need to provide with your accounts, um, you'll get guidance from the Charities Commission. And uh, if you're a registered society, then it's the Financial um, Conduct Authority who will um, again ask for the accounts to be laid out in in a different way. So these are the, the statutory accounts, uh, as well as um, uh, presenting them to your shareholders or members, you will also file those um, with um, one of those regulatory bodies. Whereas management accounts uh, are very much an internal um, set of accounts that help you make the decisions that you need to make about the business. Brilliant. Thanks, James. I think um, a lot of the clubs on the call will probably be unincorporated associations, but if there is um, any clubs that do fall in that bracket and they'd like to explore potentially the different options that are out there to be um, incorporated um, structures, then there is a document that has been produced by one of our um, legal partners called Muckle LLP, and the document is called Club Structures. So, um, very simple document in terms of title, but it does give you all of the uh, the varying structures out there that is available um, for clubs and leagues to explore. So. Some really good information there, James, to, to get us started. And, and Derek, it would be really great to, to get you in at this point. And just to talk about, um, from a club's perspective, who, who does look after your, your club accounts and, and why is it important for a club to make sure that they have the, the right accounts in place and that they're monitoring them and making sure that they're keeping on track? Yeah, of course. I think it's, it's imperative, really, that, um, that the accounts are managed um, in a professional way. Uh, and when I mean in the professional way, uh, not necessarily have to be managed by an accountant that's qualified. I think most of us have found at our own clubs that someone puts their hand up eventually to become the treasurer. Um, and that's good. Uh, and I think we've managed to, to actually get through that. I think in future years that may need to change somewhat, uh, as James describes, the, the statutory accounts might challenge one or two of our treasurers in the future but um, for now I think you know we use um, some of the club who's got that business knowledge who's got that business acronym that that will allow us to actually view these accounts um, in a way that can help drive and support the strategy. I think what is important here is that you don't want to run your management accounts in isolation you, you need to make sure that um, your management accounts are actually supporting your strategy, um, your your business. Um, otherwise, it just doesn't tie up. So um, that is imperative that you do that. Um, and, and the use of the accounts. It's no good actually producing accounts at the, at the beginning of one year and leave them in your bottom drawer until the end of the year. And then you think, oh, dear, we, we're overdrawn here or we've got some challenges. They need to be viewed regularly and they need to be viewed by the committee, not just two people. I think we all hear of things that have gone on at clubs in the past where unfortunately sometimes people have run off with the money. Um, so it's important that these accounts are really shared across the, the, the committee. Now as a club, uh, we, we actually have the management accounts um, as part of the agenda at every committee meeting, which are uh, normally on a monthly basis. Um, and the other point I wish to make here is that you need to make sure your management accounts are not consolidated balances because having a consolidated balance is almost impossible to, to view what action you need to take. So making sure that management accounts are line by line, I think James will actually talk a little bit about that more later, but that's imperative as well. You start to build a trend uh, and that trend allows you to 
to, to actually challenge what the club's doing and where to spend the money in the future. So I think uh, management accounts and, and the Treasury's role at a club um, is clearly a key role along with the other committee members, but um, it needs to be open and honest. It shouldn't just be with the chairman and the finance person that sits around the table. Brilliant. Thanks, Derek. I think it's, it's a really good point there, isn't it, around um, that open transparency with accounts. It's um, getting everyone around the table to, to be able to, to view them um, and help as well determine if there are any kind of bumps that you may experience along the way um, that can be kind of viewed and hopefully um, noticed before you, you hit that bump. But like you said, the more people you've got viewing them, that they're open and transparent just helps with that. Um, James, I think the next slide we're going to talk about around the income and expenditure of a club. Are you okay to just take us into a little bit more detail on that, please? Absolutely. Yeah, no problem. So, um, as is often as is often the case, there's different terminology that often means the same thing. So, you know, income and expenditure account is is one uh, people might also know as a profit and loss account. Um, tends to be um, over a, a, a year, uh, it might be the calendar year or you, you might have a um, separate accounting year. Uh, it, it, it's really as simple as it, sh it shows um, income and expenditure over that period. Um, and um, as, as Derek said, hopefully, ideally, it's, it's, it's broken down into enough detail that really allows you to pick up a a, a decent picture or a decent story of um, those different income streams um, and, and where you're spending the money. And then, you know, at the bottom, uh, the income less expenditure gives a surplus or deficit for the period. And then you add that to the uh, opening reserves, um, which gives you a closing position. So um, it it's, uh, we'll come on to cash flow actually in a second, but yeah, so, you know, a simple kind of categories um, and and yeah, again, as Derek said, I'd, I'd, I'd always look to, within reason, try and break these down in, into as much detail as you can to get to get a true picture. So even from, you know, just looking at the example we've got there, we've got um, so we've got member subscriptions, tournament sponsorship. Well, you know, you'd want to know the different types of membership category you'd want to perhaps know a little bit more about the tournament income itself. So is that is that fees? Is that um, food and beverage? Is it um, other components so that you can really, you know, work out which part of of running a tournament or running an event is actually um, bringing in the most income? Um, and yeah, and then, you know, some simple uh, examples of expenditure there um, ranging from says salaries but yeah we'll come on to this in a later podcast it might be more um just paying for uh, you know coaching or um certainly non-employed um people to support an event uh you've got the rent rates utilities office costs so it you know it covers the whole spectrum uh and there's some good templates out there where you can see kind of how it's how it's laid out um so that you know your different costs are are categorized in a nice easy easy way and and you know it's always a, i think anyone who's doing who's preparing this information is you know is, is always kind of trying to work towards um perhaps the person who's who's least confident mm. competent um looking at spreadsheets to make sure that it's it's really clear exactly um what the business is doing because if you're asking people to make decisions at committee level about the business, they need to understand um, uh, the income and expenditure. Um, now, so yeah, it's just a, another little small point here, which might be relevant for some. Um, it says for charities, uh, it might be the same maybe for, for, for a grant. So maybe a revenue grant. Um, sometimes you'll see it's split out so that um, in terms of restricted and unrestricted income so where you've committed to spend money in a particular way uh, perhaps to a grant funder um, it 
it, it's it's a way of just sh uh, showing, I suppose, the true position um, of of what the club could spend its money on, um, because it's committed to an external body. In this case, maybe a grant funder to spend it for a, in a certain way on a project. Um, okay, and then do you want to show the statement, Danielle? And then um, again, it's a it's a very simple and perhaps as we said earlier, like it maybe we'd break it down a little bit more, but um, a basic example of an income and expenditure account. Um, so you can see, uh, you know, this is for 2019. So it's over, it's retrospectively over that period. Um, um, there's a surplus in this case of 7,000. The opening reserves, so coming into the year with 10,000. So, you know, that gives you a closing position of of 17,000. Um, so it's, you know, it, 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 it's obviously a very useful snapshot of the year. It, um, it differs slightly from a cash flow, which we'll talk about in a minute, but it, it, it will allow what's called accruals. Um, so, uh, it's not completely based it, unlike a cash flow when the cash actually hits the bank. Um, it may be that, um, uh, a transaction takes place, uh, and and it's cap it would be captured in an income and expenditure account, say in 2019. Whereas actually, so maybe um, for example, um, uh, an invoice is billed, but you haven't actually received the money. You would still capture that in the income and expenditure account. So it gives a a true reflection uh, in terms of. Um, the transactions, albeit it 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 doesn't give the same uh, true reflection as a cash position. James, if you don't mind, just going to jump in there. I think it's also yeah. worth um, mentioning that it's imperative that the statement, which is everything that goes into the bank account, it is reconciled to your your ledgers really that you're running. So um, yeah. because without that regular reconciliation. You could be you could be managing the club off a balance, which is incorrect. So it's just a point as we go for all of these uh, podcasts to remember that regular reconciliations between external uh, holders or cash um, is key that you do that on a regular basis. Yeah. And is there, I mean, probably a question for you both, really. Are there any other things that clubs and league treasurers or committee members should be looking out for um, in this? Uh, income and expenditure sheet, for example. I mean, you've done a, you mentioned a really good point there, Derek, around that reconciliation quite often to make sure that something isn't being missed. Is there anything else that clubs should be looking for? I think, Jen, I think trends, you know, as, you, as, as Joan said, if you can break this down a little further, you, you will see some trends that will allow you to, to actually look at the highs and lows of the balance sheet and the income and expenditure. So that drives some decisions around the committee or some discussion around the committee about what action needs to be taken. Yeah, it's, and, and you know, it's particularly pertinent now. I mean, you know, where businesses are obviously having to, to and sports clubs in particular, rethinking, um, you know, what do they really need? So, you know, for example, we're working with quite a lot of sports clubs at the moment who are thinking, well, actually do, do we need, you know where they've got rent and rates. Uh, I mean, there's a there's there's a rate holiday at the moment, but you know, do they need um, do they need that f to be paying that rent, or you know, are there other are other ways that they could um, deliver the activities they've got, um, perhaps without the same cost, or you know, maybe there's ways that they uh, you know, perhaps even things like board expenses or bringing more things online like you it allows you to constantly almost check and challenge like how you operate where there's savings to be made or um you know or, or potential of income and i think as well you know with income um it it's really helpful for you know particularly say new committee members to see mm -hmm. where the main um income streams come from because it helps prioritize discussion at board level um so actually it might be that um you know everyone always wants to talk about board expenses but you know 
by far the most time actually should be spent on how do we get a good system in place to make sure we get our subscriptions in or because actually that's such a big contributor to our overall income so it should help inform um you know that kind of discussion and how much time is spent um on on each area and it probably links really nicely as well to Derek's point that he mentioned earlier around um linking it in strategically with a business plan with the club or league's visions um that may have a financial contribution towards it, whether it be a new facility or whether it be um, some money put aside to make sure that the right legal support can be had for a restructure, for example. So their yeah. visions and their milestones that clubs and leagues want to um, achieve will naturally need to be aligned to um, income expenditure budgets to make sure that they can um, continue to work towards that. Obviously, if there is a, a financial element aligned to some of their visions and kind of a key achievements that clubs and leagues want to do. And I think you, you've both made a really good point there around the need for club and league committee members and the role of the treasurer or finance officer to continually look at the accounts. I think that's really important and having them presented um, at committee meetings is, is really important and something that obviously we would we would strongly recommend that the club and leagues do do that and make those visible and transparent to all. Um, James, you obviously next section really is, is around kind of cash flow and I know you mentioned that right at the beginning. Can you talk a little bit more around cash flow? Yeah, I just I, I'll talk, I'll give a quick kind of summary. I mean, obviously, um, uh, so yeah, the cash cash flow is is a nice. Um, uh, thing to be read really alongside the income and expenditure account because I think most people would see the income and expenditure account as kind of giving that true reflection of, of the business but cash flow ultimately um, could could undo the business you know if if um, as I said at the start if you're not on top of um, your kind of credit control um, sometimes there are uh, quite big gaps between um, when you actually do get paid. Um, sometimes there's even almost like little things to be careful of when you're looking at a cash flow statement of when the timing of when bills are paid. So say like an, an energy bill is, is a good example of that. Um, but it, yeah, it allows you to see the peaks and troughs in, in your season as, as to when you get your money in. So, you know, when, whenever we used to look at um, kind of football clubs that are higher up the league, professional clubs, it, it although, you know, a lot of clubs do get into trouble, it, it people always used to say, well, actually, it, it should be quite straightforward from a cash flow perspective because you tend to know when your money's coming in. You know, you tend to get your season tickets in at the start of the season. You should get your commercial revenue in at the start of the season. If people get TV money, they know when it's coming in. So, you know, the... That, that level of um, kind of detail about when that money will be received just really helps you to to um, then manage the money that you've got. Um, and, and, you know, other things pop up as well. So, you know, in terms of, um, you know, bad weather or or worse, as we've seen with, with, with COVID, really, you know, the more you can know about um, when when money is likely to be received and, and where you get a pattern year on year it's again helpful for the for the committee to 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 prepare and mitigate for those issues james just on that i think yeah sorry derek i, th I was just going to bring you in here because i think it's a, a really good point um i know you mentioned right at the beginning around looking at trends and james gave some examples there that might be more eligible for clubs within maybe um national league system play a higher step level of football for example um at a grassroots club level, do you still have the same opportunities to make sure that certain kind of um, elements of, of clash flow are in at certain times to help you understand what your season may look like from a financial perspective? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and particularly fees. I think all of us uh, probably listening to, to tonight um, are, are aware of when fees should be paid uh, and you do set a forecast for when you expect them to come in. Um, but we always allow for 20% um, as an example that don't come in on that due date. So if you expect to get 50,000, you know, you, you're not going to get that. It's very unlikely unless you've got an extremely efficient service and you've got some fantastic parents. But that's un, un, unrealistic, I think. So I would suggest 
that you budget for, you know, 80% of your cash flows almost across the line, uh, across every line, unless you're absolutely 100% confident you're going to get that money in. Because over overstating um, your income it will get you in, in a difficult situation as well. Uh, the other point I'll make about cash flow is I think when you do run a business, you do, do need to ensure that you have a number of cash flows coming into your to your bank account. So don't become reliant upon your fees uh, as your your only income stream. And that's yeah. why I think it's important that this is linked to your your business plan because if you need to look at other income streams, uh, you should do that regularly as well. Uh, because if you do lose, let's say, 10 teams from your club uh, and you are reliant upon them fees actually running your balance sheet, then you are in in trouble. So it's, it's just worth considering a number of different options to get into your cash flow statement. No, I think I think that's really important. And and like you said, Derek, again, speaking from a club at a, a grassroots level, it's important whichever level of the game you play, however big or small your club size is, diversity of income is so important. And I think now more than ever in the current climate we find ourselves in, you, you've made a good point there, subscription fees probably, possibly in some cases may fall less than the 80% that you have at your club, just because times are going to be exceptionally challenging for everyone. Um, James, you mentioned right at the start around different capital projects, maybe needing to find different sources um, of kind of support for projects. So the ones that they maybe had earmarked might not necessarily be there. So that diversification of income is, is really crucial. Um, so yeah. two really good points there. Um, James, do you want to carry on with the cash flow elements? I think yeah. there's a little bit more we could just tease out with you. <laughs> yeah, sure. So. Um... And I think there's this statement on the next page, isn't there? So I think I mentioned before, it's, you know, when you look at, um, you know, the difference between income and expenditure and the cash flow statement, it's it's really about the, the timing of when that um, income and expenditure happens. Um, and yeah, if you if if you can get both, then it's then it's ideal. So, um, uh, and and yeah, again, it's. <laughs> You know, it's it's easy. It's often easiest to apply it to small businesses, but then sports clubs and football clubs are are small businesses because, you know, ultimately um, there are there are lags in terms of, um, and and I think it helps you with trying your best to think about your systems and how you receive that money. So I know a lot of work's been done on um, trying to make things cashless and move to direct debit, um, and you know the more the more really that can be done, it obviously helps from a um, governance perspective to take away some of the risks of managing money, but it's really helps with the cash flow. Um, so, yeah, you know, point, point that Derek made earlier. So the, 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 the more you can make your um, cash flow predictable and, and um, get it closer to being certain that you're going to get 100%, the better really. And, 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 and then have provision for you know, I think it's a bit unfair to expect that lots of clubs would have had provision for a pandemic. But, you know, thinking about poor weather, matches being cancelled, that's something that will happen every every winter. So, you know, how how will you meet how will those bumps be met? So are there sufficient reserves or um, other ways that you can bring in that income, um, you know, to mitigate those risks? Okay, and then so then moving on to the balance sheet. Um, so uh, yeah, th so this again is a, um, a snapshot in time. T tends to be um, uh, looking back over over a year a period. Um, so it it will list the assets. So what what you own or um, or are owed. So it could be debts uh, and then liabilities. Uh, money that you owe uh, on a particular day and the way they're typically broken out um, is in terms of long term and short term so really in terms of short term assets they're talking about um, assets that can be well which could be cash or other assets that 
um, could turn into cash um, within a year. So kind of thinking back to the cash flow issue and mitigating risks, um, you know, short term assets should be able to help with that. Whereas uh, long term assets, which might be um, facilities or equipment, for example, um, are going to be take longer to, to turn into cash if that's what you needed to do. Um, and the same kind of definition really with short term liabilities. So, yeah, you know, a short term liability is is a creditor, something that you owe to someone um, as an example or or tax that you're expecting to pay, maybe uh, rates for, for the facility that you own or um, VAT on transactions. Um, and again, you know, then there's also the long term liabilities, which could be a mortgage, it could be a loan, um, something that's payable over a, over a longer period of time. Derek, just um, to, to give a, a club overview of, of kind of assets and liabilities, what were some of the things at Forest Glade that you had in terms of assets? Uh, I know your ground very well. Um, I know your clubhouse. Uh, are they part of some of your assets and liabilities as a club? It's an interesting challenge, actually, because the, I suppose in a way the club's fortunate or unfortunate that we haven't got clubhouse facilities, so we haven't got them huge overheads that lots of clubs have got. But when we moved to our, our current um, facility, um, we found a, a greenfield site that had nothing on it. Um, and in the, the landlord's view, well, that's fine for football, now just sort of get on with it. Now, that wasn't, that wasn't any good if you're trying to provide uh, proper facilities for boys and girls of this world. So we then spoke to a local, uh, local uh, businessman who, who owned a number of... Um, I would classify them as dormer buildings, and we we pulled four of them together um, along the M25 through the Dartford Tunnel, and that closed the tunnel. That would created all sorts of challenges locally, but we got there eventually, and we we built a clubhouse around that. And the only way we could finance that at the time was actually borrowing money from the guy who was providing us with the facility. And he was great. So he helped the club out. We paid the money back over a period of eight years. So that that became an asset of ours without an, any need to pay any more money back. Um, but I think as a, as a club, if you look around your grounds, you can actually see a number of things that you've purchased or hired over the years that you built the club up. And you'll find that you've got quite a lot of assets. Um, and you just need to ensure that over a period of time, they will depreciate if, if, if they're on that sort of scheme. But just realise that they will need replacing at some stage. And I think that again comes back to the balance sheet of actually making, making a line for goalposts, as an example. I know the FA have kindly helped us through some of that, but just make sure that as a consequence of, of, of that, that you are providing um, enough cover to make sure you cover these items in the future. Brilliant. Great overview, Derek. That's really, really useful. And, and like you say, there'll be lots of assets at clubhouses um, and that depreciation is really important. But more, more importantly in that is having a, a line um, in your expenditure section that actually does accommodate um, for any kind of future replacements, etc. So I think it's really important. Um, really good overview of um of budgets, of, of dif understanding different accounts, of income and expenditure sheets, of cash flow sheets, of balance sheets, so lots and lots of information. A great introductory offer. Um, so thank you very much, James and Derek. Exceptionally useful. Um, and like I say, lots of terminology for our listeners to digest. So um, it might be a case that you need to rewind um, and go back to a point just to make sure you jot down what that definition is and some of the top tips that you've been given today. So it just leaves me to say, Derek and James, thank you very much for your time this evening. And um, for those listening, thank you as well, because I know that your time is exceptionally precious. Well, that's a wrap. Thanks for listening and a huge thanks for all that you do. This has been the FA's Money Matters podcast, which has been all about why money should matter to you and your organisation. Thanks to those that have taken us through the detail and given us some top tips. If you want more information, just search the FA.com Clubs and League Services. And for additional resources, be sure to check out Sport England's Club Matters. 
please leave us a review and send us any questions if there's anything missing or there's any opportunities in the future of what you want to hear about be sure to reach out to us you can reach out to me on social media it's at Tom Lee 1150 on Twitter and Instagram. Be sure to engage with your county FA if you want any additional resource in the meantime. As always, it's been a pleasure and hope to catch you on the next one.